Hi, you're watching Global Energy Show's 5x5 five five series. I'm Rachel Gregory, and today we have Manesh Singh, Professor of Chemical Engineering at University of Illinois at Chicago. Thank you, Manesh, for being here today. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Manesh. So can you introduce a little bit about yourself and your position at the university? We work in the area of sustainability and material science. We work at the interface. In common terms, we develop new and fancy materials that can be used for energy applications and environmental remediations. The application, we mostly look into decarbonization of chemical industries. We focus on carbon capture and converting the captured CO2 to the chemicals that we use and daily life. These are the biggest polluter in chemical industry. So we have a strong focus in decarbonizing, reducing the carbon emissions and meeting the net zero or net negative target in our next coming years. So can you tell us about this breakthrough discovery that you have? And what makes this process so unique? This is a more on the carbon capture and conversion system. We started in 2016. We were intrigued by how nature works and how robustly or naturally can capture carbon dioxide and convert it to glucose or other energy products which plants use for their own sustainability. We were inspired and we were wondering if we can implement such a system which can capture carbon dioxide and convert it to something which we want which we use therefore the concept of artificial photosynthesis came in with integrated carbon capture and conversion and once we capture carbon dioxide we can convert it to chemicals and here the discovery is capturing carbon dioxide and converting it to ethylene ethylene is interesting it's a very universal chemical it has two double bonds and if i go bet in the chemistry you can really leverage the carbon carbon double bond to make a range of chemicals polyolefins you can make Plastics is, is one of the biggest one. You know uh, this as a polyethylene bags. We use a lot. Just to put a number, it is about 170 million tons of ethylene is produced annually. For every ton of ethylene that is produced, there is 1.5 ton of carbon dioxide emitted. So about for 170 million ton, we are emitting about 250 million tons of carbon dioxide every year into the atmosphere. That itself can give rise to a fraction of a temperature increase. So it, it does have a huge impact. All of these processes which is out there can only reduce the carbon emissions by 50 to 70%. Well, we were intrigued, like, can we reduce it down to zero? See, meeting a net zero is one thing, and then going net negative is another thing, right? So can we really go to net zero or net negative in, in ethylene emission? So for that, we really have to change and come up with an innovation where instead of using fossil-based sources, can I use carbon dioxide directly? So if I use carbon dioxide and make ethylene, I am using the, the most accessible raw material, which is, you know, emitted from uh, burning fuels, but at least it's most accessible. So if I use that, and that is our process, we take carbon dioxide directly and use electricity to make ethylene. Ideally speaking, you can have three tons of carbon dioxide consumed for every ton of ethylene produced. Carbon emission all the way up to 200% or more than 200%. We are talking about 200% we are really going into net negative carbon emissions. So there are challenges, of course, because you know now in all of this, I'm using electricity and that electricity has to be renewable. And if you can consider green electricity and use you know some of the carbon emissions over there, from three tons of CO2 to for every ton of ethylene, I can go down about 1.9 or about one and a half ton of CO2 consumed for all the carbon emissions associated with producing my reactor, using electricity and everything else because everything has a carbon footprint. So that is the breakthrough, essentially. It's, it's a potential of having this technology implemented and really change our future by having truly green plastic available everywhere. And really, the entire world is targeting to reach net zero. So how will your research impact future studies? This is a piece of a technology which can have an impact. But that doesn't mean this is the only technology. With the current research that we are doing and our, our, our plan moving forward, it has certainly opened doors for consideration of carbon capture in the process. If you can implement carbon capture in the process and use that as a resource, it can really reduce or accelerate your journey towards net zero goal. 
What's the next step in your research and what are you hoping for? We started with a concept of making thing like artificial leaf. We cleared initial R&D level of research uh, at UIC and we published several significant results showing the promise and moving towards the so-called TRL levels, right? So we are around four or five. Now our journey is going towards TRL six or seven, which is really making the prototype and putting at a scale where we can evaluate its impact. So our target right now is going up to kilograms to 10 kilograms of ethylene production per day. And from 10 kilograms going to 100 kilograms and moving forward. So as we go up in the scale, we are going out. We cannot do things like this at the manufacturing scale at a university. So we have partners. Thank you so much, Manesh, for being part of the series and for talking about your research. It's really exciting and promising stuff. So we are glad you're able to share it with us today. Thank you, Rachel. And of course, thank you for watching Global Energy Show's 5x5 series. Please like this video, share it to your network, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews. We'll see you next week.